Good evening. Good night, Aniruda. Yeah, it's night. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the flag car community meeting. Um, we had a two minute uh, late start this time because I encountered some issues um, in kicking off the YouTube live stream, but um, it now works and we're streaming live. All right. So let me share my screen. For the presentation. we go. Um, this is the November issue of the flat car community meeting. And as usual, we'll start with a welcome round, then we'll have a sec we'll have a look at the news and happenings and the flat car project. The November spotlight is kind of similar to the October spotlights, we have three mini projects in the flat car universe that we'd like to present, we got a status update on arm 64. And um, missing from the agenda, we have a release planning um, after that, and we'll close with a general Q&A and discussion. All right, let's get started with the say hi section. Let me stop sharing so we get your full screen. And um, please introduce yourself real quickly, starting with Annie Rudder. Hello, everyone. I am the open source contributor here, currently working on the fleet lock client work, work. And I would like to hand over Jeremy. Hi, um, my name is Jeremy. I'm a, a software developer working on the flat car project. Uh, I work for Microsoft, recently uh, working on, on Kubernetes support in flat car mostly. Mathieu. Hi everyone, uh, it's Mathieu from France, uh, working in the Flatcar team, uh, mainly work on the test of the OS, and uh, yeah, let's hear from Kai. Welcome back from vacation. Hello, I'm Kai, also part of the team at Microsoft, and um, yeah, currently, yes, I'm back from vacation, don't have a, a task I'm working on, but soon, probably again. So what's next, Dongsu? Hi, my name is Dongsu. I'm also part of uh, Flappa team at Microsoft, usually working on security issues and release builds and so on. Next, William. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is William. I'm on the Flappa team at Microsoft, mostly working on uh, ARM64 issues. Is that everyone? Uh, back to you, Tilo. Hi, I'm Tilo. Um, I'm the manager of the Flatcar team at Microsoft, but sometimes I get to play with um, engineering stuff as well. That was so with the SDK container, which I introduced last time. And is um, this time I'll, I'll cover um, having Firecracker and Flatcar on Flatcar, uh, the other way around, having Flatcar and Firecracker um, later in this presentation. So let's. Go ahead. And I wish it would memorize the section of the screen that I'm sharing, but here we are. Right. Latest news and happenings in Flatcar. We have a big round of releases just out. This includes um, major releases to all channels, except for LTS, which is LTS, so it doesn't get major releases. Mm -hmm. There's a major new stable release, beta and alpha release. Stable will finally use cgroups v2 by default. There's a second slide on that because we don't want to get anyone nervous. It ships Docker 2010. So major package upgrades there. Beta is our first 
beta release which supports ARM. And um, the fact that ARM goes beta implies that all of the ARM tests are green. More on that later. And finally, Alpha has a number of exciting package updates. It has a latest system D and um, it ships with OpenSSL 3.0, which allows Mathieu to do a little bit of playing um, the FIP support. And we have that in the um, spotlight later. Okay, quick reiteration on uh, C groups V2. Um, Jeremy did uh, dro drove most of that initiative. So, um, do you want to take over, Jeremy? We want to take the slide. I, I think I can. Um, so C groups V2, we introduced it to Alpha, I think, two months ago. Um, the way we went about this is we made sure that only new nodes, so nodes provisioned with images um, after Alpha release 2969 or the current stable will, will have C groups V2 enabled. Older nodes will have some compatibility um, settings, which will ensure that they continue running in C groups v1 mode. Uh, you will be informed about this when logging into such a node. So there's a there's a banner on the on the message of the day that informs you of what has happened and, and where to get more information. Uh, so all updated nodes should continue running as they as they were. Uh, and should not run into any issues due to this switch because they are not switched. Um, right, so proper C group V2 support is only available starting with Docker 2010, which we ship in these in, in, in the current stable. And um, so if, if you rely on our system Docker, that's good, it will work. If you use your own Docker or container D binaries, like, like if you have frozen binaries that you prefer to use, then you will have to ensure that these are compatible with C groups V2. Um, we encourage everyone to use the system DC group driver. Um, when you deploy Kubernetes on top of, of Flatcar or on top of any OS, you can supply a setting, I mean, an option to kubelet whether to use C group FS or system D. Um, C group V2 is supported with the system DC group driver, and it should be like make sure that you use the same one in, in Docker and in container D and in kubelet. Um, we, we, we tested that with our settings, the, the ones we ship with the OS, this, this will work, and kubelet will, will work if you specify. I mean, the, the kubelet will work if, if, if you specify the system D flag. Um, if you have any issues with the with the migration or you you encounter an edge case that we haven't thought of, then please open an issue. Please reach out on the on the matrix um, chat. We're we're there throughout the day. We usually jump on interesting problems quite quickly. So yeah, I hope I hope no one no one needs to make use of these these uh, channels and and nothing will go wrong. We've had the, the change baking in, in alpha for, for the last months, and uh, we have not had much problems. There, there weren't that many problems that we, we encountered. There was something in the initial week of deployment that we, we didn't see, but since then it's been quiet. So we, we believe this is really ready for a stable. Thanks, Tilo. Thank you, Jeremy. That was, um, that was quite thorough. Uh, maybe two additional things we want to mention is you can force even new provisionings into the V1 compatibility mode, even though we recommend not doing so. And um, if you so desire, you can upgrade your updated instances to use V2. And um, there's documentation available for both. Uh, thanks again for your good work, Jeremy. All right, coming to the flat car development section. And uh, we have three items to look at. We're looking at the FIPS provider in OpenSSL 3.0. We're looking at um, a new um, experiment proof of concept of a web service that can transpile um, container config into ignition. And we're looking into booting Flatcar on Firecracker. Let's start with OpenSSL. Um, Mathieu. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Tilo. So 
I will be brief uh, since uh, we are going to publish a blog post regarding OpenSSL v3 on Flatcore, but I think it's worth to mention it uh, live and with a live demo. So first we can uh, just mention what's new really with OpenSSL v3. Uh, so with OpenSSL v3, there is some major feature, which is the provider one. So with the providers, you can now abstract the logic between the algorithm implementation and the final user of OpenSSL from a user point of view or directly from a programmatic point of view. So this is quite cool because it brings some flexibility to the user. Uh, there is uh, there are a lot of, um, of built-in providers like the default one, the legacy one, uh, the new one, but also you have the, the FIPS uh, provider, which can be a quite, quite uh, interesting because it embeds the algorithm who are uh, FIPS compliant. So let's see, yes, with a quick demo, thanks uh, Tilo for sharing uh, your screen, your demo, um, how it works to provision a flat car instance with FIPS. So first of all, I just run a simple uh, QMU uh, instance of Flatcar, so which is basically a similar version of the alpha we just released. And we checked that we run on version 3 of OpenSSL. Then we do two tests. We just uh, hash the Flatcar word with MD5 and SHA-1 uh, algorithm. So like so, we can just see that everything works as expected. So now let's power off and provide a container Linux configuration. So the goal of this configuration is to say to OpenSSL to use a FIPS module. So we convert it to Ignition. Then we boot the instance uh, using Ignition. So if we take a look more in detail to the configuration, we can just see that we run a FIPS install command, which is built into OpenSSL. Then we update the OpenSSL uh, shipped conf by the new one generated. Uh, this can be done in the way uh, when we build the image, because this is something specific to each instance of Flatcar. Um, so yeah, now we're going to boot uh, the instance. I don't know why it took so long, quite some time on this uh, IPv6 thing. Some system D uh, magic, I guess. Uh, and then we are going to, to test a few things when the instance we will have boot uh, to assert that we run in FIPS uh, module with OpenSSL. So now the instance is booted, so we just assert that we still run on version 3 of OpenSSL. And we run the same test of uh, trying to hash a flat car word uh, using SHA-1 and MD5. So with MD5, it doesn't work because MD5 is not FIPS compliant. Uh, it's not FIPS compliant. So it's not it's unsupported by the FIPS provider. So this is the way to assert that we run OpenSSL with the FIPS provider. And yeah, so just as a reminder, OpenSSL just submitted two, two weeks ago, yeah, uh, the FIPS provider to uh, the NIST uh, things to, to just um, make official that is it FIPS uh, validated, but it's not yet validated. So it's FIPS compliant, but not yet FIPS uh, validated. So yeah, that's it for OpenSSL and stay tuned for uh, over news uh, regarding this topic. All the available guests will be on the blog post and uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Matthew. And um, moving on to Ignition as a service. Um, Jeremy, do you want me to present or do you want to present? No, I, I'd like to share the screen. Perfect. Uh, but you can share the, just, just show the slide quickly. I don't have the slide, unfortunately. Oh, gotcha. One second. So we'll start with the slide for a moment and then, and then I'll switch to the browser. All right. It's, okay. Um, so Ignition as a service, uh, Microsoft hosted a, a hackathon recently and I took the time to work on something that, that interested me, which was um, hosting um, the config transpiler that, that Matthew also showed, the CT binary uh, as a, a service on Azure Functions, which is a serverless offering that, that we have here at Azure. Um, 
So why did I do this? It, it was, I mean, it's a hackathon, so so it was just for fun. But I kind of see this as as a, a possible step up in in usability in the future, to directly link to our documentation around ignition and to kind of collect a bit more uh, ignition snippets in in one place and and have it make it possible to directly view the the rendered output. So now I'll take over. And I'll just open that link that was uh, just on the slide. So it's on my personal GitHub, um, the Hackathon 2021 repository. Um, what, it, what I did is I, I'm, I'm not very proficient in, in any of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. So this was my first experiment. Um, essentially, when you type into this box and you press render, it submits the body to, to a, a service. Um, the service spawns, uh, uh, spawns the, the application that processes and parses the, the text and, and renders it as, as, as ignition JSON. So quick example, storage is our, uh, is the storage section of, of an ignition config and we can add from there. So I, I already noticed that there are some, some deficiencies in the service, for example, it would help to have fixed width fonts here in the, in the upper window because it's YAML, right? But we can you know, progressively start adding things and exploring how this gets rendered and seeing what the errors are. Okay, so here we're trying to create a file called test and it's complaining that mode is unspecified. Um, the service is very strict if there's any warnings and it will just print the warning instead of rendering output. Okay, so we add a mode, right? We find out, no, the mode cannot be a string. It needs to be an int. Okay, fine. We remove the int. What do we get? Path is not absolute. Okay, so, so we add a bit more. We say etc test. And there we have it, right? We have an empty file that gets generated. Um, you know, we could add a bit more contents inline. And then here we could have something like, hello world. There we go. And it, the, the data is escaped. Um, so that's why it looks the way it does. Yeah, so that was the, the project. I think we could incorporate something similar into our documentation experience at some point, but for now it was just, just for fun. But feel free to hit up the, the URL and, and explore yourself. Um, as I said, it's Azure Functions, it's built by, by, by youth. So just play around if you, if you so please. Thanks. Great work. Um, thank you, Jeremy. All right. I'm just looking for my slides. I'll be ready in a second. Okay. And one more time. Let's um, talk about Flatcon Firecracker. Firecracker is a very lightweight virtual machine that uses KVM in the, in the kernel. And um, so it's fast as well. Stock flat car without any modifications boots in about five seconds to the shell, which is nice. Um, and this is a pretty manual thing. It's, a, it's, it's almost a hack. Um, stuff is hardwired in there, but uh, it's a nice proof of concept to just get set you up um, to take the initial hurdles that, that you have um, in using stock flat car release artifacts and, and, and getting this done. All right, so um, first thing we do is we get um, Firecracker. I used release uh, V0246 for, the, for my tests, uh, Fire Kettle, which um, only exists in uh, V010, but it's very usable. It basically, makes the Firecracker JSON um, configuration unnecessary because you have most of the options available on the command line. Then we need to get flat car binaries. Uh, so that's, I just took the current stable release for that. Um, in particular, we need to get the 
v, uh, VM Linux, the compressed image, and um, yeah, sorry, the um, BZ compressed uh, file system, operating system image, and the VM Linux compressed kernel. You're going to extract this um, to get the uncompressed VM Linux kernel from the compressed image, and that's necessary because um, Firecracker can't handle compressed kernel images. That's perfectly fine. Um, and then in order to boot Flatcar, we need to tell the boot process the Verity hash from the USR partition, and you can extract that from the release VM Linux. So the boot can uh, validate that um, the user partition hasn't been tampered with. And uh, we need to extract the USR and root partition UUIDs from the image as well. And that's um, necessary for Flatcar to find its root as well as for um, Firecracker to actually um, figure out what root partition to use. And then we'll be there. There's a, um, there's just that I did, there's a script that basically automates that um, with hardwired um, versions. So if you desire, and if you wanna play around, um, feel invited to use that script and um, to just go ahead. In action, it looks like that. Uh, so I did a bit of playing around already. Um, so this is the result. I use um, the extract VM Linux script from the kernel to get the uncompressed kernel image from our complex compressed kernel release. It works like that. Um, then I can simply use DD to actually look into the um, kernel image and extract the Verity hash. And there it is, no need to memorize it. And then um, I look into the operating system image and um, I'll figure out the partition IDs from both the user partition um, that we're gonna use as well as the root partition. Um, the command line options for Firecracker are the complex. So I have a small script. And um, this script just calls Firecracker, uh, just calls Firekettle um, with the correct Firecracker binary. It tells it where the uncompressed kernel is. It um, tells it the ID of the root partition. So Firecracker finds that. And then there's a bunch of command line options to make flat cover um, and to point it to the right image, um, to the right um, root and um, and user partition as well as it includes the the hash the variety hash of the user partition so the boot is successful if we now start the script then the thing that happens um flat cutter boots up in Firecracker, and um, it takes about, this is the initial boot up. So it takes about um, eight seconds to initialize. But um, if I kill that and I do it again, then it'll be significantly faster. It's also a little cached in, in memory, of course, now. And it's now booting up. You know, about the same time. That's weird because I tested that a number of times on my laptop. Maybe it's busy with the Zoom call and um, I couldn't uh, get to boot in about five seconds. Um, it's um, it's uh, pretty much a... a non-qualitative value anyways. But um, so this is how this works. And it's pretty fast and it's pretty lean. We, we could probably also turn off the, the console messages with the quiet uh, command line argument that would probably be useful in this in, in the firecracker environment. That's actually a very good, um, a very good point, yeah. Uh, there's a number of um, pretty low hanging fruits uh, to iterate on that and to optimize the boot time, but yeah. Uh, just squeezing that. So Firecracker uses a serial console 
um, to give you access to the machine. And um, Jeremy's and highly right. If you don't push anything uh, through that serial console, then the boot will be significantly faster. All right. Then let's continue with the presentation. That was the demo. And um, handing over to William for the ARM update. Yes, indeed. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, great update to share today, really happy to be here. As Tilo mentioned earlier, the Flatcar beta, which we released just earlier today, is the first to feature ARM64 support, the first beta to feature ARM64 support. Uh, barring any issues uh, that uh, we or anyone else runs into, we'll be promoting ARM64 to stable in December. Uh, if you're interested in playing with uh, Flatcar on uh, ARM64, now is the time to start playing with it and letting us know if you hit any problems. Uh, in the event that you do, please raise an issue on GitHub or as always, uh, come talk to us on Matrix or IRC. Uh, just as a note for the curious, we're currently running our test suite on three different environments. Uh, we've got actual ARM hardware at both AWS and Equinix Metal. And uh, we are as always running the tests virtualized with Kimu on AMD64 hosts. Uh, that's all for the ARM updates this month. Um, in December, I hope to have a slightly better time frame about when uh, to expect ARM64 in stable. But until then, uh, back to you, Tilo. Thanks, William. That is great news indeed. All right. And um, coming to our last section, which is the release planning. So Cyan, unfortunately, can't, hear, can't be here today. Um, he'll be back in the release planning meeting in two weeks. Um, handing off to Dongzu and Mathieu. Dongzu, Mathieu. Um, yes. Uh, can you please open the planning board? Yeah, I'll just quickly go over the planned ones on the left side. You can see the uh, next release uh, planned, uh, which is uh, November 15th. And yeah. A couple of uh, package updates are already merged, and uh, several others are in progress. And so, if you uh, look into those and uh, feel uh, so, uh, would like to update and jump into the issue, then yeah, feel free to do that. Also, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, and uh, yeah, no November 29th. Yeah, that's uh, three weeks ahead. So Cyan wrote uh, a huge list of packages to be updated. So uh, of course, we cannot update every uh, package listed in here. But yeah, if you would like to work on uh, any package updates, then yeah, that would be really great. And also, I want to mention that uh, if you want uh, are already working on, on individual issues, then uh, pre, uh, when you are uh, able to assign to this board, project, project board, then yeah, please do that. Because if, if you don't do that, then it will be um, so go away and, and disappear from the board. And if you are done with that, then the move to the release, read ready to release column on the right side. And that's it from my side. Thank you, Dongsu. Of course, um, the contributors the, uh, uh, that, that join us in this effort can also ping us on metrics and build the moving forward then. Thanks everybody for your help with the releases. And this is our usual shutdown. Um, if you want to join in, please jump on board. There's a number of ways that you can get involved. There's a number of ways to reach out to us. We're always happy to help. If you want to pick something up and you don't know where to start, or you have like initial friction, um, we'll, always, we'll, we'll always be around to help you along. Join us for the next community call and join us for the release planning in two weeks to stay up to date.
Okay, folks. Do you have any feedback, questions, anything you want to discuss? All right. Well then, thank you, everybody. Thanks for your participation so far. Thanks. Ways you can follow us. Um, see you around. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. No. Bye. Yeah. Good night. Bye.